Nuts and Grape Nuts Flakes program, starring Jack Benny, with Mary Livingston, Phil Harris, Dennis Day, Rochester, and yours truly, Don Wilson. <laughs> Say, folks, ever notice how the mood you're in can make a whale of a difference in the work you do? If you're in the right mood, things just seem to zip along. That's why it's important to get in a good up-and-at-em morning mood by eating the right kind of breakfast. You can't do a man-sized job on a bird-sized breakfast, you know. Nutrition experts say morning's the time we should stoke up when we need at least one quarter of our daily nourishment. So right here is where I tell you about those two grand breakfast treats, grape nuts and grape nuts flakes because nutrition experts also agree that the adequate breakfast should include both fruit and a cereal with whole grain nourishment. Well, that's certainly grape nuts and grape nuts flakes for you. Both are basic seven foods, outstanding in their all-around whole grain nourishment. Tops also in their zesty crispness, with their malty rich sweet as a nut flavor. So eat a good breakfast, do a better job. And for extra swell eating, feature grape nuts or grape nuts flakes. That was Great Day, played by the orchestra. Now, ladies and gentlemen, before we start our show, I know you've all been anxiously awaiting news of the big conference and session since last week. So we take you to the actual scene where they're discussing the great problem of the day. But, Mr. Benny, I still think I deserve a raise. (laughs) Dennis, let's not discuss it out here in the hall. Let's go into the studio. But even in the studio, I think I deserve a raise. (laughs) But, kid, when I explained it to you last week, you were happy. Now, look, I pay you $35, and for that, you sing a song which lasts only two minutes. That means... Hello, Jack. Hello, Dinah. Hello, Miss Shore. Now, look, Dennis. <laughs> She's cute, isn't she? Now, look, kid. Your song lasts two minutes. That means you're getting $17.50 a minute. Now, that comes to $1,050 an hour, $25,200 a day. Multiply that by seven days, and what are you getting a week? Dennis, who have you been talking to? My mother. Your mother. Let me tell you something, kid. Your mother... Oh, maybe I shouldn't say anything about her. Go ahead. She says plenty about you. (laughs) Oh, she does, eh? What does she say? I don't know. She tells it to my father. Well, you can hear, can't you? No, they send me out of the room when they say things like that. (laughs) Now, Dennis, your parents have no right to talk about me or discuss our business. And you ought to be very happy working for me because... Fred Allen's going back on the air in a few days. Fred Allen? Now, what brought that up? Well, Mr. Allen offered me $50 a week. Dennis, the only person on Allen's program that gets $50 a week is Portland... And she had to marry him to get it. (laughs) Why, Alan pays his cast so little, even Morgenthau's complaining. I sing better than he does. (laughs) Sure you do. That's why I want you to stick with me, kid. And you'll go further than anybody in this. Oh, hello, Red. Hello, Jack. Hello, Dennis. Hello, Mr. Skelton. I do it. I do it. I do it. Well, D, 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 you. Dennis, don't be silly. What was that, anyway? That's what Mr. Skelton does on his program. Oh. For that, he gets paid? (laughs) Well, kid, now now that everything's settled, we better get into the studio. But, Mr. Benny, my mother said... Your mother again. Why does she keep hounding you to get a raise? Well, she thinks I ought to make money while I'm young. My voice is liable to change any day now. (laughs) Look, kid. Kid, I'm getting tired of listening to those feeble excuses. I've got you legally tied for the entire length of your contract. And if you're not satisfied when the contract expires, you can get yourself another job. Yeah, but who'll want me when I'm that old? <laughs> Dennis, our agreement doesn't run so very long. 
It's just a normal... My mother says I'll expire before the contract. <laughs> oh, she does, eh? Now, you listen to me, kid. Ooh, my throat. Oh, <laughs> pardon me. Now... <laughs> Now, you listen to me, kid. What I gave you was a standard 20-year contract, and your mother knew it. <laughs> listen, you're... <laughs> listen, I gave you a 20-year contract, and your mother knew it when she signed it. She thought it was an FHA loan. <laughs> well, that's the most ridiculous thing I ever heard of. Why, to hear you talk, you think I was trying to cheat you out of a raise. Now, look, kid, you know I'm generous, don't you? Well, anyway, I've always tried to be... <laughs> I've always tried to be fair to the people. On Excuse my me, point. Mr. Benny, I gotta get this sound equipment through here. Okay. Dennis, step over against the wall out of the way of this truck, will you? Now, Dennis... Say, Mr. Benny, are you satisfied with the sound effects I've been doing for you this year? Yes, yes, they've been very good. Now, Dennis, the reason I can't pay you any more... <laughs> What's that? I got a new train effect. Oh, oh, very good. Now look, Dennis. The reason I can't pay... I got a new gun, too. <laughs> now, Dennis, as I was saying... Hey, I got a sound effect of an English spitfire making a dive. Would you like to hear it? No, thanks. Not now. Now look, Dennis. Believe me, I'm paying you all... I, I told you I didn't want to hear a spitfire. Oh, that was a German Messerschmitt. <laughs> Well, I'll be... <laughs> what are you laughing at? Just think, I could have pulled him out of it. <laughs> look. Look, we're, we're trying to have a private discussion here. Will you please take your sound effects and go? Okay. Now, what is that? You don't care if I go by boat, do you? <laughs> Go any way you want, but go. Okay, bye. What a silly guy. Now look, Dennis. I've told you I'm paying you $17.50 a minute. That's $25,200 a day. And aside from money, working for me is giving you a lot of experience. You know, you meet a lot of nice people. Dennis. Dennis. Dennis, what's the matter with you? I'm getting seasick. <laughs> Oh. Hey, Bud, will you take those sound effects out of here? Okay, okay. Now, come on, Dennis. Let's go into the studio. We got a program to do. For That was Shoo Shoo Baby, played by Phil Harris and his activated jukebox. <laughs> and now, ladies and gentlemen... Uh, say, Jack, what happened out in the hall? Did you give Dennis his raise? Uh, Don, uh, you're, you're working, aren't you? Yes. You're, you're happy? Yes. Hmm. And now, ladies and gentlemen... <laughs> Uh, tonight... Come on, Jackson, tell us what happened. Now, how'd the kid make out? Phil, it's none of your business. Go ahead, Mr. Benny, tell him. I want to know, too. <laughs> Dennis, our little discussion is a private matter just between you and me. Don't ball him out, Jack. It's not his fault that we know he didn't get it. Don, Dennis's raise doesn't concern you, so don't worry about it. 
He'll get it in time. Oh, brother. What are you all brothering about? In time, in time. I've been with you eight years and I'm still getting the same lousy salary. Well, you still got the same lousy band. <laughs> And time didn't help it any. Oh, what are you talking about? Look, Phil, look. You got four violins that nobody can hear. <laughs> An electric guitar player whose nose lights up. <laughs> A bass fiddle with French doors. <laughs> And a brass section whose ill wind blows no good. <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. And the, why, the way those guys dress. Look at them. Well, what's the matter with the way they dress? They know what they're doing. They all read Esquire. Esquire? Yes. Well, tell them to sit up. Those exotic poses don't excite me a bit. <laughs> well, let's drop it. And now, ladies and gentlemen, tonight we are going to... $17.50 a minute. That's $186,000 a week. That's... Hey, kid, what are you mumbling about? Gee, it's so much when he tells it to me and so little when I bring it home. <laughs> Dennis. I must have a hole in my pocket. <laughs> Dennis, I'll explain that to you after the show. And now... Oh, say, Jack. What is it, Don? I meant to ask you, how's Mary? Well, you know how laryngitis hangs on. Right now, it's hanging on to me, too, by the way. <laughs> but she's feeling much better. That reminds me, I promised to call Mary and see how things are going. She's still pretty sick, you know. Oh, she's getting along all right. I sent Rochester over there to help out. Hello? Hello, who is this? This is the new maid, Butterfly McQueen. Oh, oh, yes. Well, may I speak to Miss Livingston? I'm sorry, but Miss Livingston ain't talking today. I know, I know. She lost her voice. Uh, butterfly, it's laryngitis. Hmm? I say it's laryngitis. Laryngitis. Okay, I'll tell her you called. <laughs> no, 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 Butterfly. This is Mr. Benny. Oh, how do you do? Uh, butterfly, how's Miss Livingston feeling? She's much better. Right now I'm fixing her something to eat. Scrambled eggs, toast, and tea. That's good. But I think there's something wrong with the toaster. There is? Yes. Every few minutes it throws the bread out. <laughs> it's, it's supposed to do that. Now, Butterfly, I sent Rochester over to help you out. Is he there? Yes, sir. He's in the next room. What's he doing? Shooting crops for the doctor. <laughs> Shooting, well, of all the... Butterfly, put your Uncle Rochester on the phone. Okay. Uncle Rochester, you want it on the phone? Okay, honey. I'll be right back, doctor. Ate your point. <laughs> Imagine I sent him over to Mary's to help around the house. He's shooting crafts with the doctor. A fine... Thing. Hello? Hello, Rochester. This is Mr. Benny. I sent you to Miss Livingston's house to work. What are you doing? Cleaning up! <laughs> oh, cleaning up, eh? So you have been busy. Busy? I've been sweating over a hot rug for an hour. <laughs> yes, I know you were, and I heard you say to the doctor the point was eight. Oh, oh, that! Yes, that. I was helping him read the thermometer. <laughs> I see. And I suppose that point eight referred to Miss Livingston's temperature. Yeah, she made it the hard way. <laughs> Rochester, you might as well admit it. You were shooting craft with the doctor, weren't you? Yes, I was, boss. Now, how did you happen to start? Well, when I was three years old... I don't mean that. <laughs> I mean, how could you have the nerve to shoot traps with a doctor? Well, I'm a bone specialist myself. <laughs> now cut that out. Incidentally, I'm commencing to sound like you do. <laughs> a fine doctor he must be. I suppose he charged for his visit, too. Yes, he brought the bill for the whole week, so I paid it. 
Okay, Miss Livingston will return the money to you. You don't have to, boss. I want it back. <laughs> what? Someday I'll listen to your chest. I got his stethoscope, too. <laughs> well, give it back to him and go right home. Goodbye. Goodbye. Oh, say, boss. Now what? There was a notice in the mail this morning that you have to go and renew your driver's license. Oh, well, in that case, Roger, you better bring my new car down. We'll drive over to the Motor Vehicle Bureau. Did you say new car? All right, so it's secondhand. Everybody has to buy a used car. But, boss, a yellow cab! <laughs> Never mind, just bring it over right away. Okay, goodbye. Goodbye. Someday that Rochester's Say, going... Say, Jack, what did you do, buy a car? Yes, Don, you know, I gave my Maxwell to the scrap drive last year, and I had to have something to ride around in. What kind did you buy, Jackson? Oh, it's a foreign make, a French car. French? Yes, it's called a, uh... Texay. <laughs> well, fellas, Rochester's is going to pick me up and I have to go over and get my driver's license. Go ahead with your song, Dennis. So long, fellas. See you later. crowded in here. I'll never get waited on. You have to push your way through. Yeah, but Rochester, I can't just push my... Oh, way. sure, boss. You get in front of me, I'll push you right up to the counter. Well, okay. Gangway! Hey, what are you doing? Watch out! Watch out! Who do you think you are? That's enough, Rochester. That's enough. Watch where you're going. Stop pushing! Rochester, that's enough. Stop already. I'm behind the counter. <laughs> What's the matter with you? Yes, sir? 
Oh, miss, will you please wait on me? I came here about my driver's license. My, how'd you ever think of this place? Well, I... You were recommended by some pedestrians, you know? <laughs> this is one of the places they told me to go. <laughs> Now, miss, my license has expired, and I, I want to get a new one. All right. Your name? Jack Benny. Occupation? Hmm. Stone, stage, and screen. <laughs> Rochester. Sorry, boss. And radio. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. What's your height? Uh, five foot eleven. Weight? One sixty-five. Hair? My hair? Thirty-two fifty. <laughs> <laughs> She doesn't mean that. She means the color. <laughs> Miss, my hair is a sort of a palomino gray. <laughs> I see. And, uh, and your eyes. Oh, they're blue, aren't they? Yes, but this suit I'm wearing really doesn't do justice to them. <laughs> <laughs> well, all right, blue eyes. Take this application and get in line at window three. Your eye test. Thank you. Come on, Rochester. I got to go to window three. Yes, sir. Right over here. You're next. Thank you. Now, this is my eye test, isn't it? Yes. Now, can you read the third line on that chart? Not very well without my glasses. Can you read the second line? Oh, yes, yes. It says. Would that... you mind taking a step back? Not at all. Why? You're supposed to be at least one foot away from the chart. <laughs> Oh, yes, I, I did creep up a little too close there. <laughs> now, can you still read that second line? Yes, that's A-L-X-R-B. You're wrong, that's 13769. <laughs> that's funny, am I making such a glaring mistake? Maybe I ought to put on my glasses. There. Is it all right to drive a car wearing glasses? Oh, sure, I wear them too. In fact, I think I'll put mine on. Say, the rims on your glasses are just like mine. Yes, so they are. Now, looking at the same chart, I want you to... Say, you're right. That is ALXRB. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Now it looks like 137... <laughs> Six nine to me. You're both wrong. It says no smoking. <laughs> <laughs> oh. oh, 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 yeah. Now what? Uh, what do I do next? You have to take your old test. Go right through that door to the street where that lady is standing and wait your turn. Thank you, Rochester. You wait here for me, will you? <laughs> My goodness, you have to go through such a mishmash to get a driving license. <laughs> oh, hello, Mrs. Greenberg. Oh, hello, Mrs. Randolph. And what are you doing here, Suzette? I'm getting for me a driving license. <laughs> but why, after all these years? So when I'm sitting in the back of the car telling my husband how to drive and he gives me a dirty look, I can show him my license. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I wish I was finished or I did. Oh, it looks like a long wait. Oh, why don't you let me help you with your packages? Oh, thank you. I went special to the store today to buy for my husband some grape nuts flakes. Oh, my husband enjoys them, too. He loves their sweet as a nut flavor. And they're not only toasted brown, but multi-rich, yet. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so you're... You're right, lady, and they're a thrifty buy in the big 12-ounce economy size package. I'm not talking to you. <laughs> oh, oh, excuse me. Oh, look, Mrs. Randolph, I'll show you on the box. See, it says right here, Great Knots Flakes are a whole grain cereal. And look at that picture. It says Jack Benny. My, my, isn't he a handsome man? <laughs> well, ladies, that happens to be... I'm not asking you. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Mrs. Randolph, I can't wait here any longer. I'll come back tomorrow. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hey, blue eyes. Yes? Fui! <laughs> <laughs> 
What's he mad about? All right, who takes the next driving test? I do. Here's my car right over here. Here's my application. Okay, Mr. Beanie, let's go. <laughs> That's Benny. All right, let's get going. <laughs> I hope I won't be nervous. I haven't driven in such a long time. Here we are. Isn't this a taxi cab? Of course not. But it's yellow. So what? It isn't a banana either. <laughs> I'm not so sure. <laughs> All right. Get in. Okay, start the car. <laughs> Strange, and it won't go. Mr. Benny, you're supposed to release the emergency brake. <laughs> oh, yes, yes, of course. Where is it? it... <laughs> right there. Oh, I see it. Yeah, I, I hope you don't get the wrong impression. It's just that my Maxwell didn't have one, you know? Yeah. Well, we're running along smoothly now. Is there anything in particular you'd like me to do? Yes, get off the sidewalk. <laughs> oh, oh, pardon me. There, there. How am I doing now? Very well, very well. Now, Mr. Benny, do you know what the national speed limit is? Yes, 35 miles an hour. Are you allowed to park in the crosswalk? No. Very good. Of course you know what that white line down the middle of the street's for. Yes, yes, I, um... I think that has something to do with the fire regulation. <laughs> fire regulations? That white line? Yes. In case of fire, in order not to tie up traffic, that's where they lay the holes. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. Well, everything seems okay now. Do you mind if I turn here? What? Oh, I'm sorry. No, it isn't your fault at all. It's just that the city forgot to put a corner there. <laughs> the city do with all our money. Now straighten out and keep going. All right. I want you to know that I can really drive better than this, but I'm a little nervous with an inspector in the car. I understand. Now try and keep your mind on your driving, Mr. Benny. I will. You see that big truck in front of you? Which one? <laughs> That one. <laughs> hmm. You can take your head out of the windshield now. <laughs> Look, Inspector, I can explain the whole thing. Hey, what's the matter with you? Can't you see where you're going? Didn't you see me stop? Now, wait a minute. You can't put the blame on me. You didn't even have your hand out. Oh, yeah? Yeah. Oh, yeah? Well, let's not argue about it. There's a witness standing on the curb that saw the whole thing. Okay, let's ask her. Say, lady, you saw this accident. Whose fault was it? I'm not talking to you. <laughs> All right, oh, I don't need a license anyway. Rochester can drive my car. Forty years young. That's Molly Rich Grape Nuts for you, all right. Back in the days when people were first singing the sidewalks of New York, they were also enjoying their first taste of the sensational new breakfast cereal, Grape Nuts. Well, today, folks are still enjoying them, same as ever. Boy, there's nothing like that distinctive sweet as a nut flavor, is there? And now you can get that one delicious flavor in two delicious forms. Grape nuts, crisp, crunchy kernels. Grape nuts flakes, delicate, toasty brown flakes. But these two tempting cereals are more than just swell eating. Both are basic seven foods, chuck full of wonderful all-around whole grain nourishment. So there you are, folks. Eat a good breakfast, you'll do a better job. And by all means, eat plenty of thrifty, nutritious grape nuts and grape nuts flakes. We're a little late, folks. Good night, now. Jumbo Jumbo, that new giant package size of tasty grape nut sweet meal sure is one big prize. Yes, and what's swell eating. Grape nut sweet meal is rich, hot, brown, with a luscious, full-bodied texture, grand roasted wheat flavor, real whole wheat nourishment. Get Grape Nut Sweet Meal in the new economy-sized 30-ounce package. This is the National Broadcasting Company.